Hello, hello, Lancer fans. From French Hall on the campus of Longwood University, this is Lancer Central, where we give you a recap of all the happenings in Longwood athletics. I'm your host, Darius Thigpen. Great to have you folks along for the ride. Well, it's championship season for many teams, and we have just a month left for all the rest of our sports that haven't concluded yet, a month until the baseball conference tournament and just a couple of weeks until the softball tournament. So let's get right to it. Spring is in the air and baseball is in full swing. The squad has had its highs and lows this season, picked to finish fifth in the Big South. Longwood enters its weekend series against Liberty, last place in the Big South Conference, but Longwood is far from out of it. Five and 10 in the standings, Longwood is only one game back of the eighth spot in the conference, which is needed to get into the Big South Conference tournament, the ultimate goal for the season for the Lancers. Longwood is currently in the middle of a stretch of three straight weekends playing the top four teams in conference, Winthrop, Liberty, and Presbyterian. Going back to Gardner-Webb uh, before that, it's four straight. Longwood only won one against Winthrop this past weekend and one against Presbyterian the weekend before, but both were walk-off wins. The win against Winthrop was a 9-7 walk-off on a homer by Michael Osinski, Longwood's junior shortstop, set up by a game-tying home run by outfielder Antoine Tucker, who was named the Big South Freshman of the Week on Monday. The Presbyterian walk-off the week before was courtesy of junior outfielder Ryan Schull. Now that walk-off against Presbyterian clinched the win for Longwood starter Cody Wager, who earned the complete game win against Presbyterian. Cody Wager was phenomenal against Presbyterian, tossing nine innings with one unearned run allowed, five hits allowed, 13 strikeouts, and no walks issued. His performance earned him his second Big South Pitcher of the Week award and the two-time Big South Pitcher of the Week, Cody Wager. He joins us now in studio. So, Cody, did you realize that you're the only Longwood pitcher ever to have two Big South Pitcher of the Week awards? Um, I didn't realize that, and honestly, it's kind of surprising with some of the arms that have came out of the school, mm -hmm. you know, with um, Aaron Myers and Travis Burnett last year. I thought that one of those guys would have been able to do it twice. So. Now, the first time you won the award, you went eight in the third uh, innings. That was against Charleston Southern, a shutout game there. Uh, the one game you get the combined shutout, the other game you get the complete game win. Which to you was the more impressive outing, I guess? Um, well, they were both pretty fun to do, <laughs> yeah. but I would say um, the complete game because I've never, that was my first time I've ever thrown a complete game, and it's something that, that everyone wants to do at least once, so it's good to get that out of the way. And the Charleston Southern game was fun too because I pushed the no hitter bid, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't get it, so the nine innings felt way better than, than the eight and one-third. Yeah, it took a no-hitter into the eighth inning. Uh, we talked after the game, and you said that you w didn't want the strikeouts if it meant you get the complete game. Well, you <laughs> get the complete game and 13 <laughs> strikeouts, yeah. and then you only had, like, just barely over 100 pitches in the yeah. game against Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. well, to me, though, the most impressive thing, you had the 13 strikeouts, no walks. Yeah. I mean, for you, what was, what was more important to getting that win? Was it all the strikeouts or just the fact that you <laughs> didn't issue any walks? Um, well, I never like walking people. I uh, honestly, I'd rather, I'd rather give up hits than walks. And walks is kind of something that really pissed me off. But um, I don't know. The the 13 strikeouts felt good because it I, I kept my pitch count down pretty low. So mm -hmm. anytime I could I could throw 100 pitches and and finish the game felt pretty good. And then the fact that you mentioned finishing the game. Well, the game was tied going into the bottom of the ninth yeah, inning. So it was. Ryan Scholl gives you guys a walk off win. How perfect was that to get the walk off in addition to your <laughs> complete game? Man, it felt good. It, it's <laughs> it really did feel good. I'm I was ready to go back there in the tenth if I needed to, but I'm glad that we we finished it there in the ninth. It's been a while. At that time, it was it's been a while. We've walked off since then, but that, since we've walked off, and it was mm -hmm. and it was it was a good time. Well, Cody, you're in your second season here at Longwood. Mm -hmm. You were at. Pensacola State Community College, grew up in Florida. You're mm -hmm. a Florida boy like myself, yeah. so i got to ask you, how are you uh, adjusting to Virginia? How are you liking Longwood? Um, I like Longwood. Um, I would say the weather has taken a little bit of time. It's mm -hmm. like, what, April 24th, and it's 40 degrees and raining, so that's <laughs> not fun. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, it's uh, everyone here is so nice and welcoming, so mm -hmm. I, can't, I have no complaints about Longwood. So what are your plans after college? Are, are you thinking of going back to Florida? Yeah, I'm going back to Florida, but I also have um, a few more years of graduate school left to do. Mm -hmm. I want to be a sports psychologist, and the best way for me to do that is to earn a, uh, earn a doctorate in clinical psychology. Mm -hmm. So I still have about four or five more years of school, and I'm, I'm trying to go back to Florida to finish out. Yeah, I've heard that pitching is such a mental thing. Mm -hmm. Has pitching kind of gotten your interest up, piqued your interest when it uh, comes to psychology? Yeah, definitely. Um, it started with my uh, my older brother gave me a book my junior year of high school. Um, it was called the uh, 
Mind Gym, and mm-hmm. it, I read that book, and it really piqued my interest in the mental side of sports. You know, we learn a lot about the physical side and how training your body is necessary, but we never learn about the mental aspect. And this book really opened up this whole world to me of the of the mental side of sports. And um, ever since then, I've just been I've been addicted, and um, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to help athletes get to um, get to where they want to get to in life and in and in the active and the sports world. The last thing for you, Cody. Uh, what's your personal goal for the rest of the season, and what is the overall ceiling for this team? How good can you guys be? Um, my personal goal uh, is honestly just I want my team to feel comfortable with me on the mound. I want I want everyone to think that we could win that day. When I hit the mound on Friday or Saturday, whatever day it may be, I want I want everybody to come to a unanimous thing that that today's our day. We're winning. We're winning the day today. And um, overall, our team we have we have the potential to to win a Big South title. Um, we haven't played to up to it uh, so far this year, but but we have every capacity to do it. We are uh, we are a very talented ball club, and um, it just takes us getting hot at the right time. All right, Cody. It's been great, man. Appreciate your time today. (laughs) Thank you very much. The host of this year's Big South Tournament and the preseason favorite in the conference, the Longwood softball team, entered the season with high expectations that it didn't live up to until recently. Longwood entered this week third place in the Big South thanks to a great senior weekend against Charleston Southern. Longwood swept a doubleheader against Charleston Southern Friday that featured a walk-off single by catcher Kalen Bug Batten. After the 3-2 walk-off win, Longwood won games 2 and 3 by a combined 5-0 score. Senior pitcher Elizabeth Biz McCarthy pitched a complete game shutout in the senior day win on Saturday. She, the all-time strikeout leader in Longwood history, was one of the three seniors recognized before Longwood's home finale Saturday. McCarthy, shortstop and outfielder Justina Augustine and relief pitcher Jenna Carnes were all honored before Saturday's game. Now, Longwood has just one weekend of games left, three games this weekend at Radford, and then it's off to the Big South Tournament, which is going to be right here in Farmville, Virginia. Longwood men's tennis was historically good in 2017, and the run went all the way to the Big South Championship quarterfinals. Longwood went 14-6 and six on the season, 4-3 and three in Big South play, earning the four seed in the conference tournament. Longwood had never won a single Big South team match before this year, but under second-year head coach Pierre Tafelski, they were great, and he was named the Big South Coach of the Year with an incredible turnaround. Longwood set new program records for wins with 14, winning percentage with a 700 winning percentage, and Amadeo Blasco was named Freshman of the Year. It was quite the season for Longwood's men's tennis team. They were incredible. Longwood was knocked out by Winthrop in the Big South quarters in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, but Longwood ends the season riding high The all-Big South performer and senior Florian Eufer, whom we talked to earlier in the year on Lancer Central, combined with Amadeo Blasco for one of the top doubles partners in the Big South. Longwood men's tennis will return six of its eight players with Eufer and Rosen Ilchev graduating this May. Sticking on the court with women's tennis, the women's squad went on a nice run in the Big South tournament, which was also hosted in Winston-Salem, just like the men's tournament. Well, like the men, it was Winthrop to knock out the Lancers on the women's side. Longwood women's tennis saw its run in the Big South tournament and in the quarterfinals, but it was a bit of a surprising run. The women's team finished 7-14, and 1-6 and six in Big South matches, but the senior group of Paloma Alatore, all-conference performer Anna Pilak, and Mason Thomas led the Lancers to a 4-3 comeback win against Radford to make it to the quarters. The seniors trio ends its career, but under first-year head coach Maria Lopez, Longwood saw some consistency, and now that the Lancers got some postseason success, the foundation is there for them to build. The big win in the Big South Tournament was the first postseason win since 2013 for women's tennis. The regular season just concluded for the women's lacrosse team, and the squad rolled to a 21-7 win at Gardner-Webb in the regular season finale. Longwood earning the five seed in the Big South Tournament. Well, that 21-7 win, by the way, comes on the heels of a 23-1 victory at Presbyterian. So for the women's lacrosse team, the regular season ends at 7-10, and 3-4 and in the Big South. Big South Tournament begins Saturday, April 29th, and Longwood will be in Lynchburg for the quarterfinals to take on the conference rival Liberty, the four seed. It's the first time Longwood and Liberty have met in the Big South lacrosse tournament. Going to women's golf, the Big South Tournament wrapped up this past weekend for women's golf in South Carolina. As a team, Longwood finished 8th place at the Par 72 Patriot 
at Grand Harbor Course in 96, California. Well, thankfully, the low round for the Lancers was much lower than 96. Serena Walsh put together her best two rounds of her freshman season, shooting four over 76s in each of her final two rounds of the season. She finished tied for 23rd, a career high for her. All-conference performer Kyra Horlock and Christina Kertzos each shot 76 on the final day to finish 34th and 28th individually. Longwood was one of four teams to have all five players come in under 80 in the final round of the tournament. The men's golf team had a solid showing in the Big South, led by sophomore Jordan Bolton, who got off to a hot start with an opening round of 72 even down in South Carolina. Nick Contini, Longwood's low scorer in the regular season, shot one over to start the tournament. Bolton kept up his hot swinging and finished inside the top 20 individually for the second straight season, leading Longwood to a sixth place finish in the Big South tournament. Bolton finished 16th in the tournament with a two-over championship, shooting 73 in each of the final two rounds, both of which came this past Saturday. Yeah, 36 holes of golf for the championship in one day. Well, not only was Bolton great on the course, but he also earned the all-academic accolade for Longwood. Bolton, a sophomore, finished inside the top 20 in the Big South stroke average. Championship season rolls on for women's lacrosse as the Lancers play at Liberty Saturday, April 29th. And the softball team will host the Big South Tournament, which begins May 10th. The baseball team will be the last team to wrap up the semester, opening the Big South Tournament on May 23rd. Well, that's all that I've got for you this time around. I thank you for joining us on another edition of Lancer Central. For Emma, Hallie, and our entire Lancer Central crew, I'm Darius Thigpen, thanking you for tuning in. and We'll catch you next time.